that was the slide. Good morning, everyone. Great to see all of you online in meeting rooms and uh, hopefully later on during the recording as well. Um, my name is Jan Bosch. I am director of Software Center. Uh, and I want to start by apologizing for the hassle with the Teams links that we had this morning uh, because it turned out that it was my computer and my Teams account that caused a lot of hassle for all of you. But since you're here, you are, I think, uh, you found the right place and uh, you could also view it as a kind of an intelligence test. So if you're here, you passed. Let's put it like that. So um, welcome to the Sprint 22 reporting workshop. Um, which is uh, focused on digitalization beyond software. And you'll probably see uh, that some of the keynotes, like the first one by Mark Moore, are exactly addressing some of those challenges. And we're super excited about that, uh, to, to that keynote as well as the rest of the program. What is the history behind Software Center? I think everyone is quite aware of this if you've been part of this for a long time. But if you're new to uh, Software Center or if, this, if you're a guest that is joining today, in 2011, Mark Andreessen from Andreessen Horowitz wrote uh, op ed in the, I think, the Wall Street Journal with the title Software is Eating the World, which basically sent the message that software was becoming the thing that disrupted and transformed industry after industry. And that was led to the formation of Software Center in 2011. We've now been going actually for 11 years. And in those 11 years, we've grown from the founding companies, Ericsson, Saab Defense, Volvo Cars, and AB Volvo as well as the two founding universities, Chalmers and the University of Gothenburg, to 17 companies and five universities. And I'm very, very excited about the journey that we've had over the last 10 years, even though, uh, of course, uh, those 10, 11 years have passed by really fast in many ways. Why? One of the things that happened during those 11 years is that we changed the mission of Software Center from the transformation of building the software engineering capability for the European software intensive industry to improving the digitalization capability. And we define digitalization as software, data, and artificial intelligence. And all of those topics are going to come up today during the various sessions that we're going to be having. Digitalization for us is one of the key things, the key thing that is the major change between traditional ways of looking at the world and more digitalized ways of looking at the world is not that digitalization is a technical challenge. No, digitalization is actually as much a business challenge as it is a technical challenge. And what I'm trying to illustrate with this slide is what in my view is the fundamental shift that we're talking about. If you look at your car that you have, or your motorcycle, or whatever you want to focus on, we all had a model in our heads earlier where when I bought the car, the car would be the best it would ever be it's in, in its entire economic life. And during the course of the years that I would use it, the car would get a little bit worse every day that I use it. Until I was so sick and tired of the car that I would replace it and I would buy the next car. And the next car would be a little bit better than the previous one, but it would still again get a little worse every day I use it. In a digital context, value delivery to customers turns from transactional, when I buy a new car, to continuous. Every day, my customer uses my product. It should get a little bit better. It should be better than what it was yesterday. And how do I accomplish that? Well, I accomplish that by updating or, uh, ch uh, of course, deploying new software into my products in the field, which may include AI models. But it can also be periodic upgrading of electronics or even occasional replacement with mechanics. And why this is so important? is because it becomes increasingly difficult to provide differentiation to our customers through mechanics and electronics. And in order to avoid this commoditization, because if you don't differentiate, you commoditize, do you, we really need new solutions, new services, and new approaches of delivering value to customers. And of course, this digitalization of products using data from the field and changing business models can provide this differentiation that we're looking for. 
So the hypothesis that we're currently operating under is that growing revenue through new continuous business models rather than the trans traditional transactional business models based on a digitalized product portfolio is the most promising strategy that we have to increase differentiation and avoid commoditization. So that's the key mission of what we're looking to accomplish within software center these days. If we look at what has happened during the last 11 years, well, I think that for those of you that were here from the beginning, in 2011, we were very much focused on adopting agile practices within software R&D. That's what all the companies were basically working on. And since then, we've come a long way. Almost all the companies in Software Center have now adopted Agile. There are a few uh, uh, nooks and corners where Agile is still a bit of a challenge, but by and large, we have gone Agile. And the, we went through the stage of continuous inter integration and continuous test. Many companies have quite advanced uh, continuous integration and test infrastructures, which I believe are in part uh, uh, helped by what we're doing in theme one and uh, the other themes. Uh, so Christian, this is a shout out to you. And what I see that many companies are currently really struggling with and trying to figure out is continuous deployment. How do we get to this point where we can continuously deploy new software to our products in the field? And that is going to be the next challenge. Even if the next step, R&D is an innovation system, where we, for instance, start to do A-B testing in the field, is already becoming a reality in some of the companies in Software Center, such as Ericsson and Volvo Cars. So we see a constant transition, and I'm really happy to see that even though it may feel uh, much of the time that things are going incredibly slow, over time we're actually making very good progress within the member companies, and I'm super happy about that. One of the things that I'm in the midst of, those of you that follow my uh, blog post series, is I'm trying to capture what are the um, uh, capabilities that a company needs to build in order to truly become digital. And what I'm trying to do is mapping out what I believe is eight major capability areas, which I'm currently writing up in a 33-piece uh, blog post series around digitalization and, and I believe and this is my hypothesis and I'd love to discuss that with you during the day or afterwards is that there are these eight dimensions business architecture process organization user interface innovation technology innovation automation and the ecosystem and within these we have a few key areas for instance around business it is really going from a transactional business model to a, trend, a continuous business model what we often see is that many innovations in digital solutions fail because sales cannot support selling new digitalized continuous offerings. And of course, if you move towards continuous deployment and DevOps, your customer support doesn't have three months uh, uh, to time to build up the knowledge to support the customers because the software will only be in the system for two weeks. So customer support really needs to change. We also see challenges around architecture like the superset platform uh, if you used to have product specific code bases, when you have to push out new software every two weeks to the field, you cannot afford to have a situation where every product has its own code base. What you need is a superset platform where every product is basically automatically derived from that product. If we go to process, every company that we work with claims that they're agile, but many people, uh, in many of these companies, agile stops at the team level. It is not at the business level, and we need to get it in place. Other examples are, of course, the built and test infrastructure and data-driven uh, data ways of working. Around the organization, we have some issues or challenges like how do we move from the traditional functional organization to much more cross-functional teams. If we look at user innovation, it's a lot about the Horizons model that some of you may know from McKinsey. It's about design thinking and lean startup, about continuous customer interaction, which are really hard things for many of the companies. And around technology innovation, automation, and the ecosystem, we have similar challenges. So digitalization is not a small, narrow, technical topic. 
it is actually a topic that touches everything in the company and that's why if you look at the research within software center we have going from we've been going from very narrowly if you want focusing on software engineering challenges to also addressing business model innovation approaches uh, data artificial intelligence and all the other things that we need in order to be successful and I think it's one of the reasons why uh, I keep being very very excited about what we do in software center but we also constantly Recently, seen a, a very high engagement from the member companies and the member universities. So, so I wanted to brief give this as a kind of a backdrop. For those of you that are not aware or are guests in this meeting or in this uh, reporting workshop, we have 17 companies uh, that are members. So, of course, we have Bosch and Siemens as two large German companies. The founding companies, Ericsson, AB Volvo, Volvo Cars, and Saab Defense are uh, members, of course, as well. Scania, I saw Victor and some of his colleagues join, uh, is a member. We have Toyota Material Handling, uh, Boeing through one of their daughter companies, uh, Jeppesen, uh, Seft, China, Europe Vehicle Technologies, Tetra Pak. Uh, we have Grundfos, I saw Niels Jorgen and some of his colleagues uh, join the, the meeting. We have Access Communications, now part of Canon, ASAP, uh, Zens Act, and uh, Qualcomm. And then, of course, it is not just companies, we also have universities. So in addition to Chalmers and the University of Gothenburg, we have Meladolen University, Malmö University, and Linköping University. And the fun thing is, for those of you that follow how universities evolve, both Malmö and Meladolen were Hög Schooler when they joined a Software Center. And during their membership in Software Center, they received the rights to become full-fledged universities. So we cannot claim causation but we definitely claim correlation between joining software center as a uh, university Hux schooler uh, and becoming a, uh, a full-fledged university we do work as you'll see in the breakout sessions that we will have after the keynote that mark will give in a few minutes uh, breakout sessions around continuous delivery and continuous architecture we have a breakout session on metrics we have one on customer data and ecosystems and we have one on ai engineering that will be happening after lunch before lunch, we have some of the community sessions. So I wanted to briefly talk you through the uh, agenda. You can find it on the website as well, and I think that that's a, a good uh, place to be. Uh, in a few minutes, I promised uh, Mark that I would give him a bit more time. Um, Mark uh, Moore from uh, Volvo G Group Truck Technology uh, will give his plenary keynote on how to integrate fast and agile software development into a vehicle development which is again one of those key challenges that many of the software center companies struggle with how do you take mechanical engineering approaches and electronics approaches which tend to have very different timelines much more of a waterfall based approach and how do you combine that with fast and agile software development I'm, I'm personally very excited to hear Mark talk about that because I think it's very very exciting after that, at 11 o'clock, we dive into the um, uh, community update. So we have three communities. The software engineering community will have a presentation by uh, Josef, who I just met for the first time from uh, Gaia, Gothenburg AI Association, about machine learning and production. Uh, then in product management, in the product management community, uh, you can find, again, the link on the, uh, on the, on the website. Uh, there will be Niklas Einval, uh, Head of Product Management at SAP, also the new uh, steering committee member after Hannah Svantesson left, uh, as well as a lightning talk by Frederik Hugerson. I mean, Frederik Hugerson likes to give long talks, but he even more likes to give short talks, I think. And then in the AI engineering community, we will have uh, Mette Lexmant from Grundfos, the head of AI solutions in digital development, uh, who will be uh, giving a keynote there. So that's, those are breakout sessions. Then after lunch, uh, it will be um, uh, theme one and two will give uh, have a session on continuous delivery and architecture. You can see the presentations there. That's when you get a bit more of a feel for what is in the software center projects that are going on. Uh, we have a separate uh, breakout for the metrics theme. You can see the different projects that are being uh, uh, presented there. Um, uh, in addition to that, we will have a customer data and ecosystem de driven development theme that uh, has several presentations, among others, by uh, Helena. 
Uh, in the AI engineering theme, it will be predominantly the PhD students that will be uh, that are working with us on some of the AI challenges, uh, AI engineering challenges that we'll be presenting. Uh, and then uh, in the afternoon at a quarter past three, we will. So we have a short break after the uh, community, uh, the uh, theme sessions. We will have a keynote that I'm very excited about as well, because Stefan Truve, who I think some of you uh, have uh, met in different contexts, will uh, he's the CTO and co-founder of uh, Recorded Future, will give a uh, presentation, uh, the closing keynote. Uh, which will be concerned with uh, a report from the machine learning trenches, uh, which is uh, similar to what um, uh, uh, I think it was, what was it now? It was Josef uh, uh, will talk about, which is really about how do you operate AI in uh, practice? And then uh, I saw a question pop up on the screen by uh, some people. Uh, will the sessions be recorded? And the idea is yes, the sessions will be recorded. We are, have an AV provider team here that is recording everything. We'll be processing all the recordings and we'll be putting them on um, uh, YouTube after this. And for those of you that are not aware of this, uh, Software Center is on LinkedIn. Uh, Twitter and on uh, YouTube. If you search on YouTube Software Center Media uh, as a word which uh, Peter Tungren actually set up for us uh, from AB Volvo, then uh, you will find a lot of videos and also these videos will be popping up there. So follow us there. And with that, uh, I have finished my part of the presentation a little bit faster because I wanted to make sure that Mark gets enough time and I'm super excited to, to listen about that. Uh, so, Mark uh, Moore is uh, Senior Vice President, uh, Vehicle Technology at uh, Group Truck Technology. Uh, we need to do a quick swap of microphones before Mark can uh, start his presentations. But I'm very excited to learn about this. Come on into the picture, Mark. We're going to go blank for just a minute while we switch microphones. Uh, and then Mark will give his presentation. But Mark, very good to have you here. And we're very much looking forward to your keynote. So, thanks a lot. Pleasure.